Okay. All right. So let's say I want to do something. I have I have some basic animation set up just for this demo. Basically, I'm gonna I want this hand to start off with the ball. Then I'm gonna have it set down just on the surface here, and then this hand's gonna pick it up right here, and then I'm gonna switch back to this hand. So that way, basically, it's a little hand switch. So it's going like one, two, and then three, and then it just loops. So that way, we can see it just do its thing. All right. So when I set up constraints, I always start off by I might get this animation blocked out. I might do this while I'm doing my blocking. But in this case, I just set up the animation first. Um, but I like to set up a locator that's at the center point of where this, basically your object that you're going to be uh, constraining. I'll go up to create and add a locator. And then just so that way, like I could see it because once I hide this or once I move this underneath here, I'm not going to be able to see it. So if you notice under the locator shape, this is local scale. I'll just take that. I'll select those three and I'll middle mouse click. So that way my locator scale is a little bigger. Or you could just manually come over here and just type in a bigger scale. Um, just that way we could see it because otherwise it would be lost inside the geometry. And I don't really want to scale it because that can mess up with the constraint. So we're just going to do it like this. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and just place it roughly where the center of this object will be. We're going to, you're going to move it a little bit because uh, depending on where it starts out and ends up, you know, uh, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, but yeah, you set up the locator. Uh, this is just going to be constrained to this. So I'm going to go ahead and set the locator and select the ball. And I'm just going to go ahead and do that right now. Come over to my uh, animation. Let's go constraint and let's go ahead and do a parent constraint. So that way when we move our locator, it's going to move the ball. And then uh, to get it attached to the hand, since we have it at the world here, uh, I'm going to go ahead and set it up here. I'm going to find where I want that contact to happen. I want the contact to happen here, so I'm going to take my locator and I'm just going to parent it to this. Um, typically, I'll take this and I'll parent to like the controller or something, and not the geometry itself, but since we don't have any controllers, it's just geometry, I'm just going to parent this straight to the geometry. So now you can see it's already constraining there. Whoops, did I not? Okay, so my uh, my parent constraint did not, um, when I parent constraint it, my defaults, my rotations were turned off. So I'm just going to reapply that. Uh, and what it will do is that, uh, yeah, so I have to go ahead and delete that parent constraint real quick. Uh, if you want to delete a parent constraint, just select your object that's constrained. And you can just delete these just like that. Just hit delete delete key. And I'm just going to reapply that constraint. And I'm going to turn maintain offset off. So that way, whatever the locator is, this is just going to obey that. So locator, then the object, and then you'll notice it rotates. Because um, that's whatever the rotation up is. Uh, if we were to come over to our, our objects up, you can see that the object is pointing up is this way. And then the ball is also going to point that way. So let's go ahead and say, all right, we want to go ahead and put it here. And it's going to set down right around this frame here, frame 15. So then basically you do is you're going to hit S on the key that you want to uh, set down the ball. And you'll notice that it now the constraint just completely ignores. And you'll see when you hit S, it created this thing called blend parent. Um, that's exactly what you want. You want to make sure that that's keyed at zero at 15 and then at 14, you're going to key it at one. So basically what happens is before, uh, at one or anything, when it's set to one up here, when it's set to one, it's going to be constrained to the locator. And then once it's turned to zero, now it's just going to be constrained to world. Um, that's when you hit S. Let's say we wanted to move this right here. So that way, instead of the locator being like zeroed out right here, and we want to move this up here. Whoops. Let's go ahead and turn the blend parent back on. And then, uh, so that way, when we move this, it's going to move. Um, let's say we want it to end up here. If I were to turn blend parent off, notice how it goes back to world. If I just middle mouse click, it's going to world. We don't want that. We want it to end up here. 
So every, anytime you want it to be in a new spot, all you have to do is hit S, select the object that has the constraint on it, hit S, and then you'll notice that basically when you turn the constraint off, notice how it didn't move now. Now blank parent's off, and it's now here. So now when we move this, now this is the new spot. So basically from 15 to like whatever, you can actually start animating this like you normally would, and I'll add keys. Oh, I have step keys on. Hang on. Do, 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 do. Turn that to auto. And then save. And then just auto. I had my step keys by default, my default length. So you can see, like, we can just animate this now, basically. And it's going to animate like normal. I, didn't, I don't want animation, but just to let you know. Um, let's go ahead and move this back. Put, put it at one. Move this to roughly where we want the ball to end up. And then select that. Hit S. So that way this is the new spot it's going to keep. And then turn the blend parent to off. So now that's going to be our, our resting spot. And then we'll come here and we'll find where this hand's going to connect, which would be 25. This hand doesn't connect all the way, so I'm going to just move it over right there. Um, and then hit make sure that that has a keyframe. And then I'm going to want to basically have this right here where the locator is, um, or where this ball is, I want a locator right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another locator. Um, and then this one, so that way I can get the locator in the right spot. Actually, first I'm gonna take the local locator scale up. Um, to get the locator in the right spot, what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna select the ball first, then the locator, and I'm gonna go constraints, parent and then make sure that the maintain option is off which it was earlier so we should be good and then you'll notice that this now is put exactly wherever this ball is so wherever you put the ball that's where the locator is now we can go ahead and open up that locator we're going to select the parent constraint that's underneath it and we're just going to delete that um, just over here so now we know that this is exactly where we want it if, uh, the reason why I like to do that is that if I were to take this ball and like ha if I had like a weird rotation on it, then I don't want to have to match the locator or whatever to that exact position. So that's why I did the constraint from the object to the locator constraint and then you delete the constraint because then boom, that's going to stay like that. Um, let me undo that though because we want that to be right here because that's where it gets dropped off uh let's go ahead and delete the constraint i sorry i keep doing that over again um and then we'll take this constraint and then parent this one to this object here so now if we continue now you'll see the locator is now attached to my hand um so that's what we want but we do want to have this guy here now attached to the locator so we'll take the locator We'll take the object and then we'll do a constraint and a parent constraint. Um, remember that uh, maintain offset is off. And or remember those settings once you do them. But you just want to be aware that, you know, when you first do it, you want to make sure that it has maintain offset off. Um, we're going to go ahead and hit S here. And then right here, we're going to want to turn the blend parent on. But you'll notice when I turn it on, it's going to do this. So what it's doing is it's blending between the first one and the last one. We want only the last one to be affected. Uh, we want it only to be affected by this one and not by this one, which it is. So what we'll do is on our object that has constraint, you'll notice it has these locator things right here. This is the first locator that we constrain to, and this is our second locator that we constrain to. What we'll want to do is basically put keys on these um, and the same, the same uh, keys that we put to uh, basically our blend parents. Okay, stop. So basically, on the first one here, on frame 14, we'll want to make sure that locator 1 is keyed to 1, which it is, but we want to make sure that locator 2 is keyed to 0. That way, basically, now you can see it's only affected by locator 1. And then when we get to lo or when we start doing this part here, we're going to want to make sure that locator 2 is now turned on and locator 1 is turned off. And then uh, I have auto key on, but if you don't, then you'll want to make sure that you go key selected. 
And then you'll see here, locator one turns off, it sets it down, this hand comes over and picks it up. Now, let's say we want to go ahead and have them do the switch, right? Now, I'll need to go ahead and find the key I want. I'm gonna do this key and I wanna make sure that this key comes over here, close over there. And then I'll go ahead and make sure that that has a key on it. I'm gonna have it come here and then I want that to have the switch. Right now, it doesn't switch. It stays on this hand when we want it to go on that hand. So if we want it to switch, we're gonna go over here. We're gonna select our ball. And then right here where it has the keys, on frame 49, we'll go ahead and key those the way that they are right now. So we'll go to key selected and then key 50, uh, 50. We'll go ahead and switch this out so that way locator one is now affected and locator two is now zero. Now you'll notice something though. Right now it has that and then it pops. The reason why it pops is because this locator here has the rotations from earlier. So what we want to do is for this part here where it says down, we we'll want to make sure that that has a key because we want to make sure that this stays at this orientation for that part. And then when it comes over here, when it does the pop, we'll want to make sure that this locator matches like that. But the easier way to do it, since we know that this locator is the one that we're matching to, select this, uh, select the locator that we want to match to, and then the locator that you're going to match. Uh, basically the one that you're going to be matching and then you're going to add a constraint parent constraint and now you know boom you can see that it's already lined up but now we need to go ahead and do two things we need to delete the constraint that's on there but first we need to add a key to this new post because if we move it you can see it now the locator is not in the right spot so we'll have to find our locator one we're going to hit s so that way it remembers this position and then we're going to go ahead and delete this uh, this uh, parent constraint. Now you can see it goes over there. So it sets it down, picks it up, and then it switches off like so. Now, let's say I want, um, oh, let's say I didn't do that. I did. Let's say I didn't hit S first, and I just went here and I just deleted that key. Notice how, did you see that? When I hit delete, delete, pop it pops back to here. So you have to make sure that you select your locator first, hit S, whoops, hit the wrong thing. Select that, whoops, I hit the wrong thing. Hit S, so that way it saves that position, and then delete your locator. Now, let's go ahead and play it, sets it down, picks it up, switches it off, boom. Now, if I set this up smartly, um, I would have it so that way, like, basically, this object here, um, Maybe I would have this position here uh, rotate at the ver to the very end. So that once it switches off, it rotates back to like this. That way I can have it looped off. And basically what I did there is I just took this key here. I middle mouse clicked, which basically freezes your timeline. But like it moves the time down here, but it freezes all the positions. And then when you hit S, it adds new keys. So basically it's like copy pasting keys. Um, now, obviously, that slides around, but if I had a little finger movement, maybe the finger could twist it back into this position. But since this is just a limited, like, setup, you know, it's a little weird having it slide like that. Boom. So that's how I would go about doing constraints. I hope that's helpful. Let me know if it is. If it's not, let me know that, too, and then I'll try to make a better video. Cheers.